Sing the name of Jesus. Over your mind, sing the name, sing the name. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, there's no other name that is higher. Oh, Jesus. Worthy. Your grace, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Man, we serve a good God this morning, church. Amen. We serve an amazing God this morning. We lift you up this morning, God. We praise your mighty name, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for dying on the cross for our salvation, Lord. We thank you for burying it all this morning, Lord God. Every situation, every circumstance, everything that we face, Lord, you've taken it all, God. You've buried it all and you take it, Lord, and you don't complain about it. God, we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you that you look at us and you just see your children, your loving children who you love and you care about that you would do anything for. God, we thank you that you are an amazing example of what a father should be, God. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what, God, you will always, always direct us. You will always help us. You will always pick us up, God. You will always be that example of what a father should be. God, when our earthly fathers fail, you will redeem them. When our earthly fathers don't understand, you will give us understanding. When our earthly fathers aren't here the way that they're supposed to, you are always here. God, we just thank you for them. We thank you for Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you do for us. We worship you this morning, God. We honor you as we celebrate this day today. As we celebrate Father's Day, we celebrate you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we say, amen, amen, amen. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Amen. Why don't you turn around, greet somebody. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Happy Father's Day to all our fathers, stepdads, adopted dads, and men who stand the gap and raise some good kids up in here. Amen. God is good. God is good. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to, to this morning. We're going to have some cool uh, speakers and guests here that are going to share with us this morning. And uh, we're going to continue with worship by giving to the Lord. Amen. Um, you know, like as you can see, um, we have our Multiply Conference in a couple weeks. And I encourage everyone in this place to sign up uh, to, to attend. You'll hear some amazing things that are happening across the world. Uh, my father-in-law is just freshly back from Ukraine. And um, he has some awesome stories. I'm not going to spoil. You, have, you would have to be there. We got Pastor Sammy Morris from the Philippines coming. We hope you guys know Abigail. She's here from Holloway from Hong Kong. She's hanging out with us for a couple weeks with her friends. Um, and uh, so it, no, it's, it's awesome. And, um, and I'm just uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, again, it's June 29th through July 1st. We're, we, we're going to have uh, starts, starts Wednesday evening. We're going to have a Thursday morning session, a Thursday evening session, a Friday morning e uh, Friday session, and our final session is going to be Friday evening. Uh, get, man, you guys do not want to miss. You know, this is one thing that we, uh, um, I want to, I want to stress is that this, this conference is going to revolutionize our church. We are going to go back to where God's called us to be. That's going to be, a, that's a church that wins people, that builds people, and sends people. And we're going to go through the whole process of what it means to be a disciple, how to build disciples, how to not only send awesome people to, into the mission field, but also what it means to multiply. And we have a lot of multiplication that we want to announce on Friday evening. So, um, so we, want, we want you guys to be there. Um, so again, June 29th through July 1st, they we're going to have it at Mount View, our friend's church right around the corner. So it's not that far. So it's going to be awesome. But we're going to give, get ready to give to the Lord. And we're going to have it up there, the slides, hopefully. But you can give securely through text, through the church center app. we got a kiosk in the back and a box you can drop it off at. Um, and you can also just text to give. Uh, you know, give, giving goes a long way, guys. Giving goes a long way. I don't know if you guys know, but, you know, when uh, Jedediah and uh, a couple of the other guys went to, um, went to Ukraine a couple weeks after we did, uh, they brought, like, a pack of tourniquets. And one of those tourniquets was right away placed in the hands of a Ukrainian soldier. And then lit literally the next day, it saved a life. Someone was, had a fatal gunshot wound, and it saved a life. So that's something small as a tourniquet. A $20 tourniquet saved someone's life. You know, that's just by people just giving out of the, 
the abundance of their heart, the cheerfully giving. So if that can physically save someone's life, can you imagine what eternally the stuff that you're sowing into? And so what we, when we give, we sow, to, we sow into the kingdom of God. We can't give in heaven, guys. Once we're in heaven, we're stuck in a good way. But you, you cannot give more in heaven. And you, can't, and you cannot share the gospel in heaven. So it's our duty on earth to make heaven crowded. Amen. So, again, you can give that way. Um, and uh, we have one, one special announcement. But I'm going to have uh, f- uh, our great evangelist, Felipe, come up. Come on. Come on. Give up for Flip. You guys got to uh, forgive me. I'm a little bit shy, but uh, I was asked, uh, I actually asked to have the privilege because um, 18 years ago, um, I was going through a very hard time in my life. God sent me an angel to uh, arrive, and I got to throw in this little thing because uh, working for AT&T, you work with all guys, and they made an announcement that Guadalupe Tapia was coming. So all these guys would go, oh, we're getting a girl in here. We're getting a girl. And he gets there and he says, my name is Lou. What happened to Guadalupe? Yeah, so we, we, got, we got Lou. And uh, being Father's Day today, I was told that um, he told uh, somebody, he said, oh, nope, 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 nope. Don't, don't make no attention for me. Hey, boys. So, um. I want to make this special announcement, even though it's Father's Day. Um, that is also my brother Lou's birthday, so if he can uh, come up here. I, I don't like to embarrass him or anything, but I do want to. Um... Let's uh, sing him happy birthday, please. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lou. Happy birthday to you. I hope this embarrassed him enough. All right, Amy, let's get to what's important, man. We got a video for you guys. I love you, Daddy. And they're for my ice cream. And um, for the MS, if he's a man. I love my Daddy because he always lays with me in my bed. My my daddy loves me and he always takes care of me a lot, but he stays away from me from from squirrels. I love my dad because he introduced me to video games and he's really good at drums. I love my dad because when I'm talking to him about stuff, he actually listens and tries to remember it. <laughs> Not like he can. <laughs> and he's really good at getting annoyed when I do this. <laughs> I love my dad because he takes care of me. And one thing that he's good at is getting bugs. Because in the, in this morning, there was a lizard on the couch and he got it and he put it outside. <laughs> I love my daddy because he's smart and nice and a lesbian. And the thing that he's bad at is dancing. I love my dad because he takes care of me and um, he's really good at fixing stuff. <laughs> I love my dad because he always takes care of me and he's always there for me. And my dad is really good at playing pool. And um, my dad's the funniest person I know. But don't tell my sister. I love my dad because he takes care of me and something he's really good at is making me laugh. Amen. Happy birthday, Pastor Lou. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> we love you. Appreciate you. We're glad you're here. All right. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Um, Lou asked me, hey, just share whatever's on your heart. So, you know, uh, uh, keep it at a certain amount of minutes. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so uh, happy Father's Day. Appreciate you, all you men. And then uh, uh, soon to be fathers, we appreciate you too. Um, you guys, uh, uh, you guys have uh, nephews, nieces, so you guys are influencing somebody. So uh, Lou gave me a text. It's in uh, Psalms 27, 127. So I'm going to open up with that. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for another day that you give us. You allowed us to be a part of this day, God. And we ask, God, that you get all glory, Lord, and everything we do, we say and act, Lord. We love you. And all praise chapel say. Amen. All right. So we're going to open up uh, 127, Psalms 127, 1 through 5. Um, we're going to be talking about arrows. The point, the point Lou gave me was uh, arrows only go where the archer guides them to. Verse 1, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builder is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Verse 3, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows and warriors' hands. Verse 5, how joyful is the man who quivers is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts the accusers of the city gates. Amen. So my point was, it was the first point, arrow, arrows only go where the archer guides them. So that tells me that I got to do something. I got to go, I got to get out of my comfort zone and I got to continue. I got to guide, not just a one day thing. Um, the kids, as we, my kids, um, I have, first of all, Here's my kids right here, all of them right here, sitting next to Brenda. And then Domingo behind Brenda, those are my kids. And so um, to me, those are my kids, Cielo, Estrella, and Domingo, Ariana, Isabella, Clarissa. Those are my kids. So um, the first thing that came to me was Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, train up a child and the way they should go. We're always talking about when, build, and send. Well, that's the same thing as a father. We, we win. We win because they're at birth. So that's a win-win right there. So when, build. So build is part of the, the training. And then send. Send them out believing everything that we build Inside of them, everything that we allow the Spirit of God to build inside of them, that it'll flourish. So it says, train up a child. First of all, I'm a product of this scripture right here because that's my grandmother. She always, I remember from, she would be uh, um, waking up. We would wake up and we would hear preaching on the TV. We would hear uh, um, preaching on her. She had a cassette. She had a cassette player, and it, it was always preaching on that. And then, and then we would always tell our friends and our neighbors, we're like, man, we got church every day, man. We got preaching going on. And, and one of, I remember uh, uh, Pastor Fred Price, my, my grandmother would always uh, uh, have that on TV. And this guy would be preaching. I don't know if it was like just replaying it, but it was just preaching over and over and over. 
And I'm like, man, we got church, man, all day, every day. Like, man, shit, I'm tired of church. <laughs> but that's, I'm a product of that scripture because everything my grandmother tra uh, trained, we, I was able to be a part of that. And then early morning, it would, I remember it would, it would sound like uh, bumblebees. And we would always like, man, and we get closer to her room, and she would just be praying. She'll be praying, you know, like all her grandkids, all her kids. She'll be, we'll be listening, and we'll be like, and, and, and we're like, man, grandma be, what time does grandma get up? Man, she, she's already praying, you know. And then she would still get up, and she would still make us breakfast before we go to school. She'll make, uh, uh, I remember just pots of uh, beans, rice potatoes and homemade tortillas like that and so and I go man what time does she has time to pray too you know so but so that so what I learned from that let me go back to my phone real quick so train up a child in the way they should go teaching them to seek God's wisdom and will we're not just born in this world all of a sudden uh, seeking God's will, God's wisdom. You know, we're not all of a sudden, uh, that's not just on our mind. So somebody's got to teach us. For their abilities and talents. We all have abil abilities and talents that God could use to touch so many uh, not just in your street, but around your family, schools, workplace, marketplace, all that. You know, and that's what we got to do. We got to seek. Even when they are old, they will not depart from it. I'm old, right? I'm not departing from this. So we got to continue to get out of our comfort zone, uh, sitting back. On the couch, 24 hours, seven days, we got to get out of that, and we got to continue to train. If you're willing to train, raise your hand. All right, the Spirit saw that. All right. <laughs> but um, we just want you to know, continue to train somebody, either your nephew, your nieces, your friends, kids. You're always influencing somebody. And we love you. We appreciate you. And um, Brother Galindo. <laughs> Man, I, I'm nervous. Okay. Um, happy birthday, Pastor Lou. Happy Father's Day to all you men out there and meant to be fathers. Um, so we're going off the scripture, uh, Psalms 127, 1 through 5. Well, I was, I was asked to uh, do three, and I call it missing the mark. Um, Psalms 5.3 says, children are a gift from the Lord, and they are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in the warriors. Well, as you can see, the target's right here, right? Me, as a young man, I had five kids that I know of. No, I'm just, I, I, I have five kids. I had four kids at the time I was 22, and then I had another son one, um, from a, a relationship I had when I was 25, and uh, he got adopted. But, you know, my, my, my shot was, was bad. You know, I look at my dad and his father's life, and he was, um, it was just like a high dad thing, relationship. So that's what I've seen growing up with my dad and his father. Um, my dad was a, a, a man that worked graveyard, so he would come home, he would sleep. And um, so I really didn't know what a father was like. My mom worked the seven-day rotation. If anybody knows what that is, that is where she worked seven days, days. She was off for two days, worked seven days, swing shift from 4 to 12, off for two days, and then worked uh, uh, graveyard from 12 to 8. That My mom did that for years, 27 years. So it was really like me and my brother and sister kind of like, Go outside and play, and that's, that was our relationship with our parents as a young age. So I had four kids, like I said, at a young age. I didn't know how to be a father. 
I didn't, I didn't know how to hit that, that bullseye. So I ended up getting divorced at a young age. And, um, you know, I ended up doing drugs. And that was, you know, I, I was in prison. I was doing drugs. I was living in the streets, pretty much not even knowing my kids. You know, I, I was a father that, like I said, didn't know how to act like to be a father. I was too busy just um, – the more I thought about my kids, the more I would get high because it was like a numbness. It would just put, put the pain of thinking you have kids. But, you know, as time went on, I was 10 years living in the streets and just doing my own thing. Well, when I met my wife, you know, um, I got saved. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out. Um, this is going to be the, the restoration part of, of uh, the arrow being shot, you know. Um, You know, God helps us. He guides us. I, I, I started learning how to be a father when I got saved by my father-in-law, by men out here, and by the word of God. Mostly the word of God. It teaches you how to be a father. So I had to build that relationship with my kids again. So they were already at the age of, like I said, I didn't see them for like, I mean, you look at the whole 10 years. I, I didn't even feel like they even really knew me. So I had to build that relationship with them. And they were already in their teens, you know. Um, it, it took time. It took God's grace um, to be able to, to teach me how to reach back out to them and build that relationship. You know, I, I'm like that old car where it was just sitting there just all jacked up. But, you know, God has restored me to that new car to where I can be able to show my kids, hey, I'm still your father. But, I, you know, I had to ask for forgiveness for them. For what have what have I done and not being in their lives? And it took time, and it's still taking time. You know, I got grandkids; they, you know, they're not serving the Lord, but I see my sons; they're raising their boys good. You know, I think you know I'm 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 praying that God shows them that you don't learn the mistakes that I've done. You know, but God's still teaching me how to. Now I'm, I'm looking at the at the bullseye. I'm actually now hitting the target because of God. God has showed me how to talk to them, how to um, be there for them, and mostly to love them. And, you know, it, 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 it took some time. And it's still, still taking time. You know, my youngest son, he was adopted when he was two years old. So he found me. Well, one of his sisters found, found him. Then I got, you know, my, it's a long story. But I ended up meeting him when he was 18 years old. And um, so he's, he's my adopted son, that, I mean, that my son that got adopted. But we do have a, a relationship on the phone. I do see him during Christmas time. I know I need to spend more time with him. But God has restored that. God has brought me to a place to where I can be able to have that relationship. Even though he doesn't have the relationship with his biology, bio, biological mother. But, you know, that's the part of restoration God is doing in my life. You know, um, you know, now I'm hitting the mark. You know, with God's word, the Bible, the men, I'm hitting the mark now. I'm not, like, all over the place like before. Um, so I'm, with my closing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Scripture. Luke 11, 21. When a strong man fully armed, guarded in his states, his possessions are are secure when having the full armed god of god will protect us he'll protect us he protects us you know with everything that we go through isaiah 49 25 for this is what the lord says even the captive of mighty man will be taken and they will pray of the triumph will be delivered i will contend with you who contends with with, with you and I will save your children. And God's going to fight when you fight. God is going to, you know, when, when, when you're fighting back, resisting the devil and of, of, the, of, of, of the world that has to do with, you know, sucking these kids in and, and, and directing them to the wrong way. When you fight and pray and read your word and, 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 and just content with God, he's going to fight with you, but you've got to fight. You got to you got to be able to do your part, and you know I do that part. You know, and I'm, I ask the Lord, help me raise my children, help me be 
back into their lives at this age, knowing that, you know, I've been out of their lives for 12, 13 years. And they see that, you know. But my prayer is I had to, I had to ask them for forgiveness because, you know, and I told them, if we're going to move forward, I'm sorry for what I've done in my life, not being there. Um, you know, the they, they've been, their mom's, I don't know how to say this, but <laughs> their mom's has been in a lot of relationships. So they didn't really have any other father figure in their life. But now, like I said, um, when I got saved, it took time to get their trust because they're like, all right, you're just going to go back to prison. But, you know, after year, after year, after year, they they have the, the relationship with me. They know now. It's been 18 years, 19 years. And, you know, and I thank God for that. My, God is, answer, he did answer my prayers. And now I'm that expert archer guy. I hit the dead bulls all the time. You know what I mean? So I just pray that, you know, and I also missed the mark when my sister had her kids and their father wasn't in their life, but I was there all the time. You know, we can be in church and still miss, miss the mark. You know, I work a lot. You know, we could be so busy that, you know, our nephew, our niece, our kids, our people in the church is we do, we got to stop and, and take our time because these, like, like it says, God says, children are a gift from the Lord. And nobody really looks at that. I never thought that when I was a kid. Now children are precious, precious to God. They are the gift, they are the gift from the Lord. So I pray for every man here that spend that time with your children. Like like uh, like Clarence said, you know he's raising his kids. He's he's teaching the right way, the right way to live their lives with the Lord. So that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, we got the the arrow of the arrows here. I'm glad he's hits the mark every single time. I still fall short. I still miss every now and again. Although I've gotten pretty good at it, I'm not perfect. Amen? Right, kids? They're like, I'm not getting involved in that one. I'm going to read uh, verse 3 again, verse 3 and 4. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Right? Our kids are a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Arrows in the hand of a warrior. A warrior. Do you guys understand what a warrior is? A warrior is somebody who fights. A warrior is somebody who doesn't allow anything to come into their camp, into their home, into their, and, and steal their prized possessions. That's what a warrior is. And, 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 and warriors don't take time off. A warrior is a warrior 24-7. So I'm not going to put my arrows down. Because I'm it's like, well, like Tommy Boy, I'm going to choke real quick. I need to be a warrior at all times, right? I need to have and be ready at any time to protect my home, to protect my family, to protect my loved ones, to protect my friends, to protect, and we can go every, a warrior doesn't just protect those who are right here close to him. He protects his whole entire village. That's what a warrior does, and that's what I'm here ready to do, amen. I'm ready to protect my village. I'm ready to take this whole thing of what a warrior is to a whole nother level, amen. How many of you are ready to do the same thing? Amen. And warriors doesn't just have to be men. There's some amazing women warriors. I've seen a lot of uh, movies where these women are just ruthless, man. They're just crazy, and they're just tearing these men up, right? So women, I mean, you're warriors too, amen? Although it is Father's Day, we're going to stick with that one. You guys had your day. So I believe a father has to be faithful, amen? That's what, if you really want to come down to a real true warrior is, and what a true father is, right? A father has to be faithful. Our father in heaven is faithful, right? We look back at all that he has done, and we can just see his faithfulness. When we've fallen short, when we've fallen down, when we didn't do the things that we're supposed to be doing, he was still faithful 
to love us, right? He has that unconditional love. That's what being faithful is, is, is no matter what, still doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the decision of those around there. So I just want to dig into, Clarence mentioned a little bit, I'm going to dig into a little bit deeper and a little bit to more of Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. A father's job is not only to let them grow up, but they need to train them, right? Like, like Ralph had said, sometimes we can be in the house and, and we watch them grow up. We, you know, we, 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 we uh, give them all that they need to grow up, but are we training them? Because training, when, when we train, it's something completely different. When we train, it, it's something that, that just is completely opposite of just uh, uh, directing, right? And other scriptures says direct a child the way he should go. Okay, there, there's a difference between directing and training. When there's training involved, this is something that we do every single day. How many of you, how many of you, your kids have been in sports? Anybody? Or, or they, you know, when you were teaching them to drive, right? When you're teaching them to drive, it's like you didn't just give them the keys and just say, hey, you know what, here you go. I'm going to take you out there one time, just drive, and then all of a sudden it's just like, that's it. Okay, yeah, you're driving, right? No, you got to continue to practice. I've only seen this thing happen one time. That was with my son Noah. We were teaching Lexi how to ride a bike. She was probably like, what, like, like, I like, think like, like five, like five, probably like five. I don't know. And then Noah was like three. And then I can remember we went to the park and I'm, I'm, I'm teaching her how to ride a bike and she's getting frustrated. And then Noah's over there. I want to try. I want to try. I want to try. Like you're not old enough. You're not ready for this, right? And he just kept going. So, so this is I, I missed my mark on this one, right? I missed. So I'm like, fine, fine, come on. I put him on his sister's bike, and, and, and with Lexi, I'm like walking her, and I'm guiding her, and I'm, you know, helping her balance and, 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 and you know, training her, teaching her. So when Noah gets on, I'm like, okay, let, let's just get this done and over with. That way, you know, I can get back to teaching my daughter how to ride her bike. So I get him on there. Are you ready? Okay, go. And so he starts going, and I just let him go. Right? I just let him go. Like I said, I missed the mark, okay? I, I, I was, I, was, I, was a young, I was young at that time, right? So I let him go, and then as I, as I just release him, he just, he just starts riding the bike. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. So most of the time, we, we do have to spend time, and every day we got to continue to train. It's rare that things like that happen. And that's what training is. Training is spending time and teaching our kids what we need to do, how they need to act, what they need to to, to be going on. So training up a kid in the way he should go involves a whole lot more than just watching them, than just guiding them, than just uh, 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 giving them what they need to grow up, right? There's a difference. And so we need to be warriors. We need to help and encourage and build up. We need to help them and guide them, amen? Amen. So let me get back over to this real quick. So we are called to be strong in the faith and to raise our kids knowing right from wrong. That's part of teaching them and training them. We've got to show them what's right. We've got to show them what's wrong. Okay? Every child is different, right? All of us who have multiple kids. I got a lot of kids. All of us have multiple kids. Every single one of our kids are completely different, right? They have different personalities. They have different attitudes. They have different things that are going on. Everything about them is different. They look different. Some are small. Some are big. They're like, uh, continue. But they're, they're all different. We as fathers need to recognize these gifts in our children, we need to look at our children and understand that just the same way that they are different, that same way is they have different attitudes. They have different gifts, right? So my, my kids all have different gifts. I can sit here and I can tell you about all, all that they do and all the things that they're good at. Amen. But it's not about my kids today. It's about us fathers, you know, and, and raising them up and us fathers understanding and recognizing, taking the time. To see what those gifts are. Like Ralph said, is a lot of times we have we have fathers that are there, but they're not there. 
We're busy working. We're busy doing all these things, and we neglect the things that the kids need most, and that's direction, to teach them and help them develop the gifts that they have, even though you know nothing about it, right? I, I have no talent when it comes to, like, art. Luke is completely different. Luke can, you can give him a piece of clay, and he'll just make a whole fortress out of it, right? Lexi's the same way. Lexi is, I can, I can, I, you know, she, she, you see her playing the piano, but I cannot play an instrument for the life of me. I've tried. I can't, right? And it's taking these gifts and helping them, nurturing them, guiding them and helping them. And, and in the same way as we are to nurse, teach, and discipline our kids as they're God's children, right? They're not our children, God has entrusted them to us. He has given them to us, and he has trusted us to raise them the right way, to raise them to understand right from wrong, to raise them and teach them and, and train them in the way of the Lord. That's why he has given them to us. In 1 Thessalonians 2.11, I'm going to read out of the message. It says, with each of you, we are like a father with his child, holding your hand, whispering encouragement, showing you step by step how to live well before God, who called us into his own kingdom, into, his, into this delightful life. So he's given this picture of what a father is. A father is somebody that grabs their kids and takes them step by step, holding their hand, guiding them. That's how our heavenly father is. He guides us through this life. He takes us step by step. When we begin to veer off the wrong direction, because he's holding our hand, right, we, he can, he can kind of give us that little tug and, and, and put us back in the right direction, put us back on the right path. We've done that with our kids, right? As our kids have grown up and as we see that they're doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, we do what? We correct them. We tell them, hey, you know what? Don't do this because this is the outcome. These are the circumstances. This is what's going to happen if you continue to do this. This is what's going to go on, right? And so that's what it is to, to be able to take your child and go step by step, hand by hand, you know, and guiding them. And that's what we're supposed to, that's what we're called to do as fathers. We're supposed to grab them and help them and teach them and raise them. As fathers, we have to be confident in our walk with Christ, knowing that we can tell our children to do the same. As a father, we have to be confident. We've got to know that our walk is solid. we got to know that our walk is something that we can tell them, like, hey, live how I live. Do as I do, right? There are so many people out there that say, do as I say, not as I do. Have you ever told your kids that? I have. I missed the mark again. You know, there were times where I told them when I was learning, I was like, hey, do what I tell you, not what I do. And so many times, you know, uh, that, 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 kind, that kind of advice kind of like mixes a child up. And it messes them up because it confuses them. Like, well, wait a minute. If you're my example, if I'm supposed to be who you are, why can't I do everything that you do? Right? And so that's the confidence that we're, we're supposed to walk in, that confidence that, you know what, I am a man of God. I am a man of God. And my exampleship to my kids is going to do something that is going to encourage them. And to know that they can look at me and know that I'm the same on Sunday that I am Monday through Saturday. Amen? And that's important. We can freely without guilt say, use me as an example. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. In 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 1, it says, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Philippians 3, 17 says, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. Pattern your life. As fathers, are we showing the right pattern to our kids? 
if they were to uh, if they were to pattern their lives after us, what would their life look like? Ask yourself that. Today we have too many church kids that say, "I don't want to be like my dad," and for whatever the reason is, for whatever has happened, for whatever they have done, they are saying, "I don't want to be like my dad." And I have to ask myself, is what exampleship as a father am I setting if my kid doesn't want to be like me? I'm supposed to be their hero. I'm supposed to be the one that they turn to when they're, when they're weak. I'm the one that's supposed to lift them up. I'm the one that's supposed to encourage them. I'm the one that's supposed to give them all that they need. I'm the one that's supposed to raise them to be a warrior. But if they don't want to be like me, I've got to look at my life and say, what am I doing wrong? And I need to correct it. This morning, this morning I challenge every father that hears this to be that example. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11, it says, but you, O man of God, but you, O man of God, but you, O man of God, See, we are men of God. We are warriors in God's army, amen. And that's what we got we to tell ourselves. When, when we miss the mark, we got to say, but you, O man of God. When that anger begins to rise, rise up, we got to say, but to you, O man of God. When we begin to mistreat our wives, we got to tell ourselves, but to you, O man of God. We've got to look to ourselves. And, and, and out of Clarence, I said this the other day, um, he has says, we've got to become, and we've got to make the decision first to be that man of God. We've got to make that decision. We've got to realize that we are men of God. Amen? This is a worthy goal for every person in this place. To live a life that declares how devoutly and justly and blameless we, be, uh, we behaved ourselves among others. This is the kind of life that draws others to follow Jesus for themselves. And then this, is, this isn't just something just for fathers. This is for every believer. This is for every mother. This is for every brother. This is for every sister. Is People should be able to look at us as a Christian and say, man, I want to imitate my life like his. I want my life to look like their life looks. We are an example to the workplace. We are an example to our family that aren't saved. We are an example to the believers that have stopped coming for whatever reason. We are that example and they should look to us, and they should see nothing but encouragement, and they should see something different. And the thing that they should say is, I want to be like that. That's who I want to model my life after. Amen? I didn't have a great model growing up. My dad left, as you guys know, when I was a child. So I, I, I didn't know what it was to be like. I, I didn't know what it was to be a father. But when I began to get have my kids, when, when I got Anthony and, and we all became a family, is God began to show me, like Ralph said, the word, the word began to teach me how I should be. And I'm going to close with this one, Ephesians 6, 4. It says, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. That scripture spoke to me quite a few years ago. Uh, me, and, me and Anthony, you know, he was becoming a young man. And, you know, when, when they become young men, they, they're, they're strong-willed because they feel like they're men. They feel like, like, hey, you know, I'm a man already. And, you know, and, and, and I, have a di I had a different idea of what a man is. You know, I, I wasn't done training him. I'm still not done training him. I'm still trying to guide him and teach him and help him, amen. But a couple of years ago, you know, we, we, we just had a lot of conflict. He had graduated high school, and he was just going from job to job, and he was just doing things. And it was, it was, it was, it was a frustrating time that we went through. And, 
And I always put everything on him. And one day, you know, the Lord just spoke to me, gave me this scripture, and says, do not provoke your child to anger. And, man, I realized that although I was trying to encourage him, I was bringing out the nasty in him. It was me that was causing the arguments because he wasn't doing what I felt he should have been doing. And so many times we can do that with our kids is we provoke them. We might have the right intention, but we provoke them. And as soon as I let that go, and as soon as I say, you know what, God, you're right. This is your child. Help me. Help me to encourage him. Help me just to be there for him. Everything changed. Everything changed. I, I, I can't even remember the last time we argued. But if, if, if the Holy Spirit wouldn't have gave that to me, he wouldn't have shown me that. Probably to this day, we probably still would have been arguing. So if you're arguing with your kids, you got to look at yourself, parents, fathers. Are you provoking them? Are you poking them? This doesn't mean that merely uh, scolding uh, your children in the sense of admonition. It means to train and admonish. To encourage and rebuke must be combined with training and teaching. So when we rebuke our child, it's got to be with the sense is like we're trying to train them and teach them. Not just tell them that they're wrong. Not just tell them that they're not doing right. This is a responsibility for fathers. They must not neglect their responsibility to teach and to be a spiritual example for their children. It is not a responsibility that should be left to the mother or the Sunday school teacher. Fathers, men of God, warriors, I'm talking to you right now. Don't give this responsibility to your wives. Don't give this responsibility to their youth leader, to their Sunday school teacher, to the nursery worker, to that friend that, that you have that comes over and is just a great man of God. It is our responsibility. They're our kids. God has entrusted them to you and I as a father, amen. And we do not need to hand that, and we should not hand that over to anybody else. That's our responsibility. We are to raise our children on the word of God. We've got to raise our children on the word of God. And so to wrap this all up and to bring it all together, to be a good archer and to hit the mark means to successfully lead our children and our family to follow Christ. That's what it means to hit the mark. That's what it means to be a good archer. That's what it means to be a warrior, to be a father, is to be able to take that responsibility of what God has given you and guide and train and teach your children. Be that example to your wife and to your kids and direct them to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I, I want to do something a little different today. I want every father to get up real quick. If you're a father in this place, I want you to stand up. Now, dads, I want you to come forward. Come on. You guys are amazing. You might not feel amazing at times. You might not feel like anything is going on, that you're, you, everything you do is, is wrong. But you're amazing because you're here and you're trying. Amen? And to everybody else out here, other, other men, you don't have to have kids to be a father. There's a lot of kids who don't have their dads in their lives. There's a lot of kids who, who's like Ralph said, they're, they're, their dads are present, but they're not. You can be a spiritual father. You can be an example to those around you. Amen? The friends that God has entrusted you with, you can be a father figure to them. 
There are so many, I look at you and, and people look up to you. People look up to you. That is being a father figure. Be that example that God has called you to be. Amen? God is good. And so now what I'm going to do is, is we have some arrows. Where were these arrows at? We got some arrows. Oh, these, these aren't the ones, though. These are my arrows. I, I'm not... Here's an arrow for every single one of, for every single one of, of, of you fathers, of you men. And I want to give this to you guys just to, uh, as a reminder of who you are. As a reminder of what your responsibilities are. As a reminder that people are looking up to you. That you have little faces looking at you. And are looking for that example of what a father is supposed to be. And so I'm going to, Ralph, don't steal my arrows. I'm a warrior. I know what I'm, when somebody's trying to, I know when my weapon is missing. Man, that's what I'm talking about. So if you're a wife, huh? <laughs> the walking dead. Yeah, we got some walking spiritually dead fathers. Uh, my arrows go everywhere. I'm defending my family. I'm defending my flock. Amen. So here we go. If you're a wife in this place to one of these men, I want you to get up and I want you to come stand next to him. Javi, come on up. If you're a wife, if, you're, if your husband is sitting up here, get up. Come stand next to your, come to stand next to your man. Be proud. Amen. If, you're, if your dad is up here, I want you to get up. And I want you to come stand next to your dad. Come on. Like, man, the whole church is going to come up right now. He's like, just stand over there. It takes the family, amen? As much as the father takes on the responsibility of the role that he's supposed to be, we need our families. We need our wife, and we need our kids' support, amen? We need them, and we need you guys behind us, the same way encouraging us having grace on us because we're not perfect. We will make mistakes. We will fall short. We will miss the mark. But it's you guys and it's seeing your smiling faces that helps us every day to get up and do all the things that we do. To get up and go to work. To get up and, and, and go to prayer. To get up on a Sunday morning and go to church. To get up and, and go to that Bible study when we've been working all day and all night. We need the support of our families. Amen. So what I want to do right now is I want you guys to lay hands on your dads, to lay hands on your husbands, and I want you to pray for them. And I want you to lift them up because they need you. Amen. They cannot be who they're supposed to be without you. And so this is your chance to support and encourage them. Amen? Hallelujah. Go ahead and just start praying for them. I was going to pray in general. Just, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God. I just thank you, Lord, for every father in this place. I thank you for every dad in this place, Lord. God, I just pray that your hand would be on them, God. I pray that your hand would just help them, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just direct them, Lord, in all the things that they should be doing, God. 
I pray that you would just help us, Lord, as Father, just to be that example and, and that the, our kids and our wives, Lord, and those around us will look at us as an example worthy to follow. As an example, God, worthy to say, I want to imitate my life like theirs. God, I pray that we would just feel the support from our families. I pray that we would just know that we don't have to be perfect because there's grace in our home. God, I pray that you would just help us as a family just to continue and follow you. God, I pray that as a dad that our kids and our wife could say is, I want to follow them. I want to be like them. I want to be that hero, Lord. Help me this morning. Help me this morning just to be that example. Let me glorify you this morning, Jesus. Let me glorify you every day. And at the end of the day, that our families can say, my dad is a man of God. That scripture in 1 Timothy, oh, man of God. May people be able to say that about us. Oh, man of God. And that's what God is saying. Oh, man of God, to you fathers this morning. You're doing a great job. You're doing an amazing job. Keep up the good work. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God is good, amen? Man, enjoy your fathers. Happy Father's Day to all you dads, amen? If, if your father, if, if you're not here, uh, man, and... And you're going to go visit your dads later, man? Go enjoy them. Enjoy them. Because so many of us don't have our dad anymore, amen? They've gone to be with the Lord, amen? And, and uh, that's just the way it is. That's life. So if you have them today, enjoy them. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Barbecue, eat, dads, be spoiled, amen? And do everything. <laughs>